In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some tips, tricks, and hidden features on the new Samsung Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, hopefully you guys are having a good day. Hopefully everyone is safe out there. We have the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus right here in the house. A lot of you got this device for Christmas, and a lot of you may be new to the Samsung experience. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you some pretty cool tips and tricks. And if you guys would like to follow along or add these to your arsenal, you guys can go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and do so. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get into this right here and start off with our first tip slash trick. All right guys, so the first thing that I'm gonna be showing you about this tablet, and I think one of the coolest things that we have on this tablet is something called Dex right here. So what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is go into the drop down bar menu by swiping down on the right side of the tablet. Then we're gonna go ahead and click on something called Dex right here. And this is going to end up launching you into a desktop experience as you guys can see it looks pretty similar to like something from windows operating system or mac os pretty pretty cool experience right here so if you're on the go maybe you're on a business trip maybe you're on vacation and you want to do some sort of homework this can send you straight into like google drive and you guys can connect a keyboard to this or connect you know one of those pencils to it if you guys draw or do art or something like that and you guys can do your work on the go in a desktop experience as you guys can see and as you see at the bottom of this tablet as well we have three metal prongs uh, that let you use those accessories on this tablet so pretty cool stuff right there if you would like to go ahead and pick up a keyboard you can buy a bunch of pretty affordable ones on Amazon and you guys can go ahead and enjoy your desktop experience on the go as you guys can see we have our time at the bottom or wi-fi a bunch of different quick toggles and stuff like that and usually like you have on mac os or windows operating system you have your applications on the top left side right here now if you guys would like to go ahead and exit this mode you're just going to click the nine dots at the bottom left right here and you're going to go ahead and click exit decks but if you guys want a desktop experience, that is always open for you, which is pretty cool to see on advice that I got for $150. All right, guys, so our next tip is going to be something called edge lighting. This is going to be for the people out there that haven't really done too much aesthetically pleasing stuff to their tablet yet, and they want to go ahead and customize it a bit. What you're going to go ahead and do is go into settings. So we can go ahead and type in settings right here. Go ahead and click on that settings application. Then we are going to go ahead and type in edge lighting. As you guys can see right there, I already typed it in. E, D, G, E, and of course lighting right there. Go ahead and click on that. And it's under the notification folder if you guys just want to go ahead and find it in settings. But we're going to go ahead and click on this right here. And this is basically a notification pop-up style. So it's going to give you an even bigger alert that you got a notification. So let's go ahead and click on lighting style right here. And as you guys can see, this is what it's going to look like right here. So it's going to give you a little bit more of an alert that you got a notification. We have echo. It's going to go on the sides of the tablet. We have spotlight. Top of the tablet, whatever, whatever way you're holding it. We have the eclipse. We have our fireworks right here. We have our hearts. We have our bubbles right here. And of course, if you don't want any of them, just put none. We have different colors that you guys can put on here as well. We have turquoise, we got red, and we have our whole color wheel right here if you guys wanna go ahead and customize it to your liking. And in our advanced mode, we can actually choose our transparency. So if we want high transparency, we don't want it to be that bright right there. You guys can go ahead and set it to that, or you can set it at low transparency where the color is very bright and you guys can select the duration as well. So if you only want it to last a short period of time, just once right there, set it right there. We can set it in the middle or we can set it to long right there and the notification will go on for a longer period of time. So pretty cool little feature right there. All right guys, next tip we have is called color palette. Another aesthetically pleasing tip right here. You're just gonna wanna go ahead and hold on the screen, click on wallpaper and style. Once you're inside of here, we have something called color palette and uh, you can basically choose a bunch of different colors to customize um, these applications right here. So your drop down bar menu, uh, your color and your calculator right here. And you can always do it to match the wallpaper that you have right there. If you guys want to be aesthetic 
um, but I usually go with some basic colors and do some crazy wacko stuff. So with the wallpaper colors we have right here, they're pretty tame. It's like gray and light pink and just very pastel colors right here. Um, and you guys can choose those, of course. And of course, as you see, this is going to be a preview of what it looks like after you've done so. Uh, but what I usually like to do is go into basic colors right here and do things like lime green or turquoise, maybe lavender, a little pink, maybe even some yellow right there. That's kind of like a puke yellow. I don't really like that color, but lime green right there. And as you guys can see, this is what is going to look like. As you guys can see, we have it all over a drop down bar menu. Uh, we have it on our calculator as well. So if you just want to go ahead and customize your tablet a little bit more, that is always open for you. All right, guys. So next tip is going to have to do with our navigation bar. We're going to go into our drop down bar menu. Go ahead and click on settings. We're then going to go ahead and search up navigation bar. Go ahead and click on that. Then we're going to go ahead and swipe down right here. Click on navigation bar again. And we have two different things we can choose from right here. Now, I kind of have the newer way of navigating through um, our Samsung operating system, which is swipe gestures. That's kind of what I've acclimated to. Uh, but a lot of people are not used to that and they want to use buttons. And of course, we have a bunch of different options right here. We can change our button orders right here, which is pretty cool. And we can change our button position. So if you guys want buttons, go ahead and set it to buttons right here. And of course, that's how you change your button order right here. I updated it to swipe gestures because I think it's a lot quicker and easier to use. But of course, this is one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set up uh, when you set up your Galaxy Tab A9. All right guys, so next up, we have our dynamic lock screen or just lock screens in general. I'm gonna be showing you how to change your lock screen, but most importantly, that dynamic one. Go ahead and hold on your screen right here click wallpaper and style once again. And we have something right here called change wallpaper. Go ahead and change that up. Of course, we have a bunch of featured wallpapers that are of course of the new style of the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus right there. And you can go ahead and use those. I definitely like how they look. I don't think they're super creative, but we have those. We have some graphical ones, we have colors, and we have a couple wallpaper services right here. The one that I wanna show you uh, the most is dynamic lock screen, but we also have Samsung Global Goals right here. Uh, this is a really cool one though. So click on dynamic lock screen. This basically is going to give you a bunch of different refreshing wallpapers every two weeks, but you're gonna have a whole slew of them every time you close your tablet and open it back up. So. I've downloaded the dogs one just to show you and the cats one as well. Uh, but we have a few different ones right here. We have special, we have landscapes, we have plants, we have animals. We're going to go ahead and put this on cats though, because who doesn't like cats? Uh, let's go ahead and close this tablet. And uh, once you set it to dynamic lock screen, every single time we open and close our tablet, we're going to be met with a new cute cat, as you guys can see. So this is a really cool feature and a service that Samsung offers for free. Um, this is definitely something I would uh, go ahead and take a hold of if you guys want to just keep a little, you know, refreshing, aesthetically pleasing photo of either a landscape, a cat, a piece of art or something like that. I just think it's fun and it's super refreshing every time I open up. Uh, my tablet. All right, guys. So next up, we have how to take a screenshot. Um, I actually did get this question multiple times, believe it or not. So if you guys are saying, oh, this is the easiest tutorial ever, it is pretty easy. And I'm going to be showing you how to take a screenshot in a multiple different ways. So the first one is obviously the old school way. You guys are going to see uh, your volume up and down rocker right here. I'll show you right now. You're going to see your volume up and down rocker and your power button right there. Of course, we're going to want to press the volume down button and the power button at the same time to perform a screenshot at the same time. So you're going to have to do it exactly at the same time. So three, two, one, boom. We have performed a screenshot. And for most people, that is pretty much the easiest way to go ahead and perform a screenshot. However, there is another way. To go ahead and perform this, we're gonna wanna go into the settings. So go into the drop down bar menu, go ahead and click on settings. Go ahead and search up screenshot. Once you search up screenshot, you're gonna see something called palm swipe to capture under motions and gestures. 
You're gonna wanna go ahead and turn that on. And once this is on, you're gonna wanna swipe across the screen like so. And it is really not the easiest thing to perform, so I do recommend going the power button and uh, volume button route because, uh, yeah, this, this definitely takes a lot to get used to, but that's uh, another way how to screenshot on your Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. All right guys, so our next tip is basically going to be a little shortcut. And if you guys wanna open up either an application or open up a camera very quickly, uh, this is gonna be useful. So we have something called side button. We're gonna go ahead and find it in our settings folder. Next, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and type in side button. And as you guys can see, it's gonna be under advanced features. Let's go ahead and click on that. And uh, automatically, this is going to open up your cameras. So if you double press your power button right here, one, two, that is actually gonna open up the camera. Now we don't have any issues if you guys want it to be on the camera, but if you guys wanna go ahead and customize it to do something else, this is how you do it. First and foremost, turn it on <laughs> if you haven't turned on double press, and then we're gonna go ahead and click on open app. And of course, as you guys can see, we can open pretty much every single app with double press of the power button right here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on calculator. Then we're gonna go ahead and double tap right here and that's gonna open up our calculator. So you guys can customize that to your liking depending on what application you want there. I just thought it was cool. All right guys, next thing we're gonna be showing you is how to use split screen mode on this tablet. Um, this is gonna be in settings as well. You're gonna to have to turn on something. We're gonna swipe down that drop down bar menu. We're gonna go ahead and click on settings. Once we open this up, we're gonna go ahead and type in split view. So go ahead and type in split view and we're gonna go ahead and click on the split view right here. It's then gonna show you a bunch of different things right here, but what we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn on is swipe for split screen. So go ahead and turn that on, um, and if you want a little tutorial for it, um, it is inside of this right here. So it says swipe from the side, bottom edge of the screen with two fingers to change the window layout. So it's pretty easy, and this actually does work very, very well. So say we have YouTube open right now, and we're gonna go ahead and perform this. Say we're watching some shorts. As you guys can see, all you're gonna go ahead and do is swipe with two fingers from the side right here, and we can then open up a second application, which is super cool. So if we have our calculator open and we have shorts open right here, we can actually use both of them. Pretty cool stuff. And to go ahead and close that, we're gonna wanna go ahead and hold in the middle right here and swipe to either side, whatever application you wanna use the most. Go ahead and close one out that you don't wanna use. And that's how you go ahead and use split screen. Next up, this is for the people who have children or they may have a guest that's using their tablet. You may be a teacher of some sort or a tutor and you're going to be letting your um, student or kid use this tablet and you don't want them basically using any of your stuff. We do have a guest mode on this, which is pretty cool. So what it's basically gonna do is it's gonna put all of the personal applications away um, that you don't want anybody using. And it's going to have the basic applications out like calculator, all the Google application like Google Docs, Google Drive, YouTube, and things of that nature. To go ahead and open that, we're gonna go ahead and swipe our drop down bar menu all the way down to all of this is open. We're gonna go ahead and click on that little profile logo right here and it has add user, guest, and owner. We're gonna go ahead and click on guest. It's gonna then switch to guest. And as you guys can see, the tablet is now booting into guest mode right here. And uh, it's basically gonna lock all of the other personal applications like your banking apps um, and a bunch of different other personal apps that you guys don't wanna use on here. And you're gonna have the basics. You're gonna have your gallery, your camera, your Play Store, uh, your Google applications, like I said before, such as YouTube, Google Drive, Gmail. Um, and we're going to have, of course, our OneDrive and stuff like that. So pretty cool stuff right here. Uh, they're not going to have access to any of the other applications or any of your data or information. So this is a pretty cool way to let your kid use your tablet without having to give them access to any of your personal stuff, uh, like baking applications and things of that nature. So tags at this, we're of course gonna wanna do the same thing, go into the drop down bar menu, click on profile. Then we're gonna wanna go ahead and exit guests right here and go ahead and click exit. It's gonna take us back to our normal tablet mode. And don't worry, you are gonna have to put your pin in to go ahead and go back to your 
regularly programmed tablet mode. And last but not least, for our last tip, I'm gonna be showing you to hide applications on the home screen. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is go into our drop down bar menu right here, go into settings, and we're gonna go ahead and type in hide apps. So as you guys can see, it's gonna be under the home screen section, hide apps on home and app screen. So go ahead and click on that. It's gonna be right here again, hide apps on home screen. And you guys can just go ahead and search what applications you would like to hide. So if you don't want people using your calculator or you don't want them using your Google Drive or contacts or anything like that, or maybe Flow, go ahead and click Done after you choose the applications you wanna hide. Go ahead and go to the home screen. And as you guys can see, things like Google Drive are gonna be hidden. So we don't have use to any of those applications that we have hid. And if we want to go ahead and unhide those apps, we're going to go into the same little hide apps on home screen drawer. And we're going to go ahead and click these to unhide them. Then we're going to click done. And that is how you hide apps on your Galaxy A9 Plus. But yeah, guys, those were some of the tips and tricks I wanted to share with you guys. If you guys have any of your own, start some chats in the comment section down below and help each other out. Um, and if you guys, of course, have any questions, let me know them in the comment section down below. And again, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you guys want to see more videos just like this one, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. This has been Safan from TechRite. Peace out, Tech Gang.